Welcome to SMT. The only TV show that I believe in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The only TV show that does not take out the Bible nor do add to the Bible. And the only TV show that believes that about holiness and righteousness, no man shall enter the kingdom of heaven. This is TSM TV and my name is Sam. For those of you that do not know me, may have never seen me around or seen my face. As I've already said, my name is Sam and this is TSM TV. Uh, let me just give a little introduction about myself. Um, so yeah, as you already know, or as you already should know, I am the founder of TSM TV and I'm also a part of Jesus the True Shepherd Ministries. I'm also a part of Jesus the True Shepherd Ministries. So let me just give you some of the things that goes on this channel on TSM TV. The TSM TV simply stands for True Shepherd Ministries TV. And the kind of things that you'll see on here is maybe music medleys. Music medleys. <coughs> so things to do with, I don't know, uh, praises, worship, etc. Uh, you'll see many, many messages on here as well. Especially as we've entered the new year, this 2022. We are going to try everything possible in our power to make sure that we are constantly uploading on TSM TV. We're going to make sure that we are constantly uploading on TSM TV as one, that will grow the channel, and two, maybe a message that is posted out on here could help somebody out there. As we already should know, is the end times, the time to draw in there. It's 2022, a time to run faster, much, much, much faster than we did last year or in 2021. 2021 was a bit more relaxed, a bit more chilled back, even though there were also many, many things that were happening in 2021. But today, I just want to let you, everybody here know that everything that happened in 2021 was just the starter. That was all the starter that is getting us ready for what will happen in 2022. For 2022 will be a year of many setbacks. It will be a year of much, much, much persecution, tribulation, etc. Many things will happen in 2022 that will show me and show you that the coming of Christ is near. And as, or let me say, as the time that we are in right now is extra time. <laughs> We are in extra time. So God could have come a long, long, long time ago. But because of me and because of you, he is still waiting, hoping that when he appears in his glory, we will also be rapture ready so that where he is, we shall also be. So yeah, expect to hear messages on this channel. Things to do with the end time. Um... We'll be hammering on sin, holiness, righteousness, etc. All these sort of things are the kind of things that you will hear in the messages. You will never hear things to do with prosperity as it's just unnecessary. Prosperity is unnecessary, so you will not be hearing things to do with that. That's the truth. But today, I'm going to speak about a topic. going to speak about a topic um i'm not sure if this is going to be a preaching if this is going to be a message or even a teaching i'll be honest with you i'm not sure however as we go the holy spirit will lead us and what i hope and what i pray is that everything that is said here today that you'll take at least one thing away with you I pray and hope that you'll take one thing away with you because what I'm about to speak about is very, very, very vital. It is very important, but also it is also very, 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 um, what's the word I was going to use? It is very common. It is very common in many churches today. This is very common in churches today and it is something that should not be there. It's something that needs to be eradicated. It needs to get rid of because it is bad. 
it is very very bad and if you are someone who is involved in this kind of thing i pray that from this message once you hear it you will change from it because this is something that is very bad and if you are involved in this as a christian i would advise that you need to stop i would seriously advise that you need to stop because if you are doing this i can assure you that god is not happy with you i can assure that god is not happy with you so what we're going to speak about today or the message for today is don't take your leaders for granted don't take your leaders for granted why is this important this is important because many many christians today especially within this community of holiness are taking their leaders for granted they do not take the leaders that god has placed there seriously they disrespect them they have no respect for them they speak about them and do all of these many 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 painful things towards these leaders forgetting that it was god that placed them there forgetting that god was the one who placed them there so today i want to ask you that if you are a member or if you are a christian and you do not obey or respect your leader in any way shape or form what is lying ahead of you you may think i'm judging you i'm not judging you i'm just telling you the truth if you as a christian do not obey your leader i can guarantee you that if you do not change there is absolutely no way you can enter the kingdom of heaven because the leader which god has placed there for you to look up to for you to respect you do not even respect them you do not respect them in any way whatsoever so how how will you be able to make it to heaven where the overall leader is being god christ himself if you do not even obey the leader which he has placed on earth what makes you think that if you get to heaven you'll be able to obey god over there it doesn't work like that there's a saying in this world that goes by charity starts at home charity starts at home therefore everything that you do starts from the inside it starts from your circle it starts from the people that you are associated with so in other words if you love the people who you are associated with if you love your circle automatically you will love the people outside the people that you do not know it's the same as to how it goes if you respect the people around you your circle the people in your home the people in your church automatically you respect the people outside and the people higher up being god or the person or the spirit being higher up which is god but if you do not even respect the people around you if you do not love the people around you what makes you think that the people that are out there you can go and love them or you can go and respect them this is a year of 2022 this is a year where me and you should be running faster. This is a year where me and you, any sort of bad trait or bad attribute which we had in 2021 should be left behind. But no, why are the same holiness Christians, the same Christians that say they're going to heaven, why are we bringing the traits, the bad traits that we had in 2021, why are we also carrying it over into 2022? Why are we taking our leaders for granted? Why do we now think that we are bigger than the people that God has placed there for us to look up to, for us to copy, for us to respect? Why do we now think we are bigger than them? Do you not think that if God didn't want to make us a leader, to make me a leader, to make you a leader, do you not think that he wouldn't have done it already? If God saw that leadership trait or leadership quality within us, do you not think that he wouldn't have made us a leader? It is because he saw that me and you, we are not leaders. Therefore, we are supposed to be under the leader. Hence the reason as to why he has not made us a leader. Because to be a leader is not easy. To be a leader, you need to have that leadership quality. 
he has seen that I do not have it. The same as how he has seen you also do not have the quality to be a leader. You don't have that leadership quality. Here's the reason as to why he has given that quality or he's given the leadership to somebody else because they have that leadership quality. So me and you that do not have that leadership quality, why are we forcing ourselves to also go and get that leadership quality that we do not have? That we do not have by force. We are trying to put the leadership quality. We are trying to put the title of a leader on ourselves. Which is wrong. You may not see that it's wrong. But today I want to tell you it is wrong. It is not right. If you have not been placed as a leader by God. Then you have no right to say that you are now a leader out of the blue. Out of nowhere. When God himself has not given you the titleship of a leader, it is wrong. Yet this is what many Christians are doing today. Many Christians now think that they are Moses and Joshua. Many Christians now think they are Elijah and Elisha. Many Christians think they are Paul. They think that they can do whatever they want to do. They think that their power is in their hands. They think that they have the power to put whatever titleship they want upon themselves when it is wrong. That power is not in your hands. That power is in God's. If it is the will of God to make you a leader, to make you a pastor, to make you a bishop, to make you, to make you a prophet, etc. To make you a prophetess then so be it because it is the will of God. But if it is not the will of God, don't you go and use your own will and put that titleship on yourself because this is what many Christians, especially that are within the holiness community, are doing today. And it is wrong. It is not right. You may not see it, but it isn't right. Therefore, do not take the leaders in which God has placed there for you for granted. Because the truth is, a day is coming when everybody will die. Everybody will go to judgment. But as an individual, do you know when your leader is going to die? You do not know when your leader is going to die. You do not know when the grace of your leader is going to expire. You do not know when it's going to be time for your leader to be, take, <coughs> to be taken from this earth. Yet the time while he or she is here, you do not respect them. You do not love them. You don't show no sympathy for them. You do not even pray for them. Yet after when they are gone, when they're no longer a part of the world because it is their time or it is now their time that for God to take them, that is when you're now running after them. That, oh, my leader, where is he? Where is she? Oh, I wish that, that I was here. They, they were still here so I could talk to them. I wish that they were still here so that they could consolidate me. I wish that they were still here so that they could give me advice. I wish that they were still here because of this scripture that I'm reading and I do not understand. I wish that I could ask them. But it would have been too late because they are now gone. And now that they're gone, now is when you're running, you're running, you're running to go and find them. They're gone. Yet the time when they were here... You could not even pick up your phone to call them and say, oh, leader. No, how is everything? How are you? How's the family? You can't even check up on them. How do you know what they were going through in their homes? Many leaders today can come out. They can preach to their churches. They can preach to the following that they have with a smile on their face. But when they go into their homes, it's completely different. They are filled with sorrow. And you as a member, you as a Christian, that say that you're within holiness, you do not make the situation any better. Because you do not even respect them yourself. So you are also piling on the sympathy and the sorrow and the sadness that they are already in. Yet they will still come and feed you with the word of God every single day, every Sunday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, etc. 
They will still come and feed you with the word of God. But upon all of that feeding that they are still providing you with, you still do not respect them. You still do not love them. You still do not care for them. You do not even check up on them. Do you think that this sort of behavior can get you into the kingdom of heaven? Do you think that this sort of behavior can get you to heaven? It cannot. It cannot and it will never get you to heaven unless you drop that behavior. Because it's, it's, it is filthy, it is foul. It is dirty in the eyes of God. It is dirty in the eyes of God. We should never ever forget that the eyes of God and the eyes of man are not the same. Maybe in the eyes of man, what you are doing, you know, it, it may it may be to some people it may be reasonable. Some people may even advise you or to tell you, carry on, carry on, carry on. So what? It's early, it's early, your pastor. So what? It's early, it's early, it's early. The prophet. So what? It's early. The prophet is so what? You may get that advice from other people, but I can tell you now that God will never give you that advice. Therefore, in the eyes of man, what you are doing may seem normal, but in the eyes of God, it is filthy. It is filthy because as I've already stated over and over and over and over and over again, it was God who placed those leaders there. <coughs> it was God who placed those leaders there. So why are you taking them for granted? Why are you playing around with them? Like, excuse me to say, like they are footballs. Just kicking them up and down, kicking them up and down, playing around with them. Let me tell you something. Just because they are your leader does not mean that they also do not have emotions. Just because they are your leader does not mean that they are also always happy. Just because that they are your leader does not give you the right to treat them how you want to treat them. It doesn't. This is why when God appointed Moses as a leader, Anyone who did not listen to Moses or did anything that affected Moses and also affected God, what did God do? He eradicated them. He got rid of them. He got rid of them. Why? Because Moses, God was the one who placed Moses there to free the Israelites from slavery. So if he has placed this man, this humble man, Moses, there, and you that are following him are not going to listen to what he says, why should God leave you? Why should God leave you to carry on following him, giving him stress? Unnecessary stress. Why? He won't. He won't do it. Hence the reason as to why there were many, 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 or sorry, in the times of the Israelites, the times of Moses, hence the reason as to why many, many Israelites did not make it to the promised land. Many Israelites died on the way. Why? Because they didn't listen. Because they took Moses for granted. They did not respect him in any shape or form. They did not respect him in any shape or form. Even when Miriam, Miriam sorry, and Aaron went to go and speak about Moses, God punished them. God punished them. It doesn't matter what he's done. Do not go and speak about him because it was me, God, that placed him there. Therefore, you should still respect him. Do not go and gossip about him. I was the one who placed him there. So for that reason, what did God do? God punished them. So just because uh, Miriam and Aaron were the brothers and sister of Moses, does that mean that God should have left them and not done anything, even though that even though they had went against the leader which he had placed there. No. Family or not, blood or not, God still punished them. It goes to show you how seriously God takes the leaders in which he has appointed there. It is not a joke, nor is it a game. It is not a joke, nor is it a game. Therefore, we should stop this act. This act needs to be stopped. 
because it is filthy. It is disrespectful and it's not pleasant in the eyes of God. This is 2022. Why are we still bringing these acts that were in, in 2021? Why are we carrying them over to 2022? I do not understand. I don't understand, nor will I ever understand. I don't understand because it does not make sense. This that I'm saying, there may be someone out there that may get offended. But the truth is, I'm not saying this to offend anybody. I'm saying this so that if this is you or you are this kind of person, so you can amend from it. I'm not here to offend anyone. I'm simply stating the truth. Therefore, if you as an individual get offended, then it means that you know that you're also involved in this. That's why you are getting offended. Otherwise, there should be absolutely no reason to get offended whatsoever. Otherwise, there will be no reason to get offended. Because the truth is, the word of God is like a double two-edged sword that pierces through your marrow. Therefore, if this goes for you, or if a message goes for you, yes, you will feel it. You will feel it. It's the sad truth. It will hurt. Even me as an individual, there have been some messages that have been preached and it's been like, wow, this one is going straight for me. This one is hitting me in my chest. But am I going to get offended? No. I'll not get offended because on that specific day, it was like that message has gone for me. And because of that, I have done everything possible to make sure that whatever act the message was about, that I will also leave that act. I will also try to not entangle myself in that act anymore. That is the word of God. That is the word of God. So please, if you're listening to this, Please do not get offended because I'm not here to offend anybody, nor am I being disrespectful in any way, shape or form. I am simply just preaching the word of God. The plan was to read two scriptures, but with how time um, already is. Um, let's see. Let me see. going to read just one scripture being Hebrews chapter 13 the verse 17 Hebrews chapter 13 just the verse 17 and I'm going to read obey those who rule over you and be submissive <coughs> for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you, for you. You see, so everything that I've been saying from the start, it's not like I was just saying it from my head. I wasn't saying it from my head. I was saying it from the Bible. It also links to the Bible, hence the reason as to why I was saying it. Hebrews was written by who? I think Paul. Paul, let me find out. Hebrews. Yeah, I think Hebrews is Paul. Alright, well, no. Alright, no issues. But regardless, you see, everything that I was saying, it's not like I was saying it from the top of my head. I was saying it because it is biblical. It is genuinely in the Bible. You should not take your leaders for granted because it was God who has placed them there. And as you can see, <coughs> the verse 17 starts with, Obey those who rule over you. Obey those who rule over you. <coughs> so if God has placed a leader there, if God has placed, I don't know, maybe your pastor or your prophet 
or your prophetess, or your reverend, or your archbishop, or your bishop, etc. If God has placed them there, automatically you should obey them because God has given them that authority, that power, and that leadership to rule over you. If they are doing the right thing. If they're doing the wrong thing, then it, it can be, it, you know, there, there's ways to deal with that. So it gets different. But that's not, what we're, that's not what we are going to speak about today. This one just, it's just good on the good side. This is just the good side. If God has put a leader there that is from him, automatically you should obey them because he has given them that authority and that power and that leadership to rule over you. And be submissive. And be submissive. So many Christians are not submissive in the slightest way whatsoever. They don't want to be submissive. Everyone in holiness, in the holiness community today is Mr. Man and Mr. Woman. Everybody is Mr. Man and Miss Woman. You cannot tell me what to do. What do you know? What do you know? I've been reading the Bible for this uh, this year, th this amount of years. What do you know? This scripture, I even read it before you. I've been in Christianity for 30 years. How can you tell me what to do? Pride. Only one word to summarize that. Pride. Pride has entered. Let me not say Christianity. Let me say holiness Christians. Pride has entered into the holiness community pride has entered so bad so bad today in this community a christian they will not listen to their leader why maybe because their leader was only called two years ago yet them as an individual They've been in Christianity for 15 years. So for that reason, they're not going to listen to the leader that's only been there for two years. He's only been active for two years. What does he know? What does she know? Pride. The same thing that got the devil kicked out of heaven is the same attribute and trait that has entered holiness Christians. Pride. They think they are better than everybody. They think they know everything to the point where for some of them, even when they're speaking, they speak as if they were the ones who wrote this Bible. They don't want to listen to anything you are saying because you don't know, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. So for that reason, they do not even want to submit. They do not want to be under anybody. They want to be their own boss. They want to be their own man. They want to be their own woman. They want to be your own boss, your own man and your own woman on this earth. It's sad. It is so sad because this is what is going on. When you look left, you see it. When you look right, you see it. Forward, backwards, you see it everywhere. It is everywhere. Holiness Christians do not want to submit under the people who rule over them. They either want to be on the same level or in worst, worst, worst case scenarios, they want to be above their leader. Which is so bad. It is so bad. You have not been appointed as the leader. Why are you now trying to overshadow, overthrow and overpower? Three and one, your leader. What is that? What are you doing? And you think that you can go to heaven with this behavior. You, th you really think you can enter the kingdom of heaven with this behavior? As I said already, what happened when Lucifer, the devil, tried to overshadow, overpower, and overthrow God at the same time? It switched and he was cast out from heaven. And for that reason, he is now doomed. He is doomed. He has been condemned. He knows hellfire. He is going there already. The lake of fire, he is going there already. There is no stopping it. God's mind has been made up. So you as an individual, you also want to follow his footsteps and try and overpower, overshadow and overthrow your leader. 
and then you think you're going to go to heaven. It's not possible. It's not possible. If you do not stop that lifestyle, it will never be possible. I am not condemning you. I am not condemning you in the slightest. But I'm saying with this lifestyle, you cannot make it to the kingdom of heaven unless you repent and change from it. You have to repent and change from it. You see, the devil is smart. The devil is smart. But as Christians who say we are holy Christians, who say we are holy Christians, at this point, by this time, we should be able to outsmart the devil. But no. Still, after all this while, we still cannot outsmart the devil. And the reason as to why I can't say this and I will say this is because if we could outsmart the devil, you would not be able to let the devil use pride to get to you. The same, the same trait, the same trait, the same personality, the same character that got the devil kicked out of heaven is the same character he is implanted or implanting into Christians that say they are within the holiness community. How can we say we are smart? How can we say that we are smarter than a devil when the devil has used his same character to implant into us, into Christians? Right. The devil didn't want to submit, hence the reason as to why he got cast out from heaven. You as a Christian, you also do not want to submit to your leader and you say you're going to heaven, you're doing the opposite. How? It doesn't even add up, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. Or do you have the mentality or the mindset of you are you you are much more important than Lucifer? Is that what you think? Because if that's what you think, then you're wrong. Lucifer was not an ordinary angel. He was referred to as the morning star. He was the most beautiful angel in heaven. He was the most powerful in angel. The most powerful angel in heaven. God made him specially. God made him different from all the other angels. You name them. Michael, he was different to. Raphael, he was different to. Gabriel, he was different to. All these angels that are in heaven. Lucifer, the devil that we now know, was much different to all of them. He was not made the same. He was not made the same. Yet if God still happily cast him out of heaven and has now condemned him, what makes you think that you, that is flesh and blood and will return back to dust? We were made from dust. What makes you think that with pride you'll also enter the kingdom of heaven? God would allow you. Wind and fire, he cast down. Wind and fire, he's happily kept in chains. Wind and fire, he's happily condemned. You that is dust, you think that you're going to sneak your way past wind and fire. It's about time we need to wise up. We need to wise up. For they watch out for your souls. These leaders which you are taking for granted. These leaders which you show zero respect for. These leaders that you do not care for. These leaders that you do not love. They are the same leaders that watch out for your souls. They are the watchers of your soul. Therefore, if you do the things which are not of God... And you enter hell. God will ask them. God will ask your leaders. God will ask your leaders. They have to give account for your souls. Think about this before you just run out of your bed and go and add a title onto yourself. Once you say you are now a leader. Once you put a titleship on your name. Automatically. Your judgment is going to be stricter. Why? Because you should know better. 
This is not something where you just wake up, you run out of your bed and say, oh, I'm now going to become a leader. It is not as simple as that. It's not just you become a leader and oh, happy days. It's not like that. Once you become a leader, automatically your judgment is a hundred times stricter than an ordinary, let me say. I don't think Christians think about this. I don't think we think about this before we go and make decisions. The Bible says, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. They have to give account for your souls. So if you wake up out of your bed with no message from God that, yes, go and be a leader as I have appointed you, etc., then automatically you have made a decision, which is, that's in your own hands, it's your own choice. But now the following in which you gain, you are now accountable for their souls, meaning your judgment is going to be stricter. You don't understand. You don't understand. Let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. There are many, many, many Christians out there today that their actions are putting nothing but grief into their leaders. Forgetting, forgetting that the same leader who you are implanting grief within through your actions, that is the same leader that is going to give account for your soul when he stands in front of the judgment seat of Christ. And if you as that member or his child on earth did not listen to the things that he had to say, you did nothing but implant grief into him or her. You think that when he, he or she goes to stand in front of the judgment of God, he's going to say or she is going to say that God, even though on earth this woman or this man who was following me, they were implanting grief into me. They made my life sorrowful. You know what? Just leave them. Just let them go to heaven. It's not going to be like that. They will go and they will stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ and they will say everything that you did. Meaning that the account that they are going to give you, if, if you implanted grief into them, you've already lost you have already lost. Count heaven out. If your leader goes to stand in front of God and he says, God, when I was on earth, again, don't forget that God is also a fair and a righteous judge. So he already knows everything. He knows how he's going to judge everything. God, when I was on earth, you know, this woman or this man, all they did was put sorrow into me. When I went into my closet, I cried, I cried, I cried. They made me cry. You know, they were doing this to me, they were doing that to me, they were doing this, they were doing that. They couldn't even check up on me. They didn't have no care for me whatsoever. All they did was gossip about me, all these other things. You think God is going to say, all right, yeah, all right. Man, woman, come. Even though you, 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 you know, you, you, you implanted sadness into my lead or my servant, sorry. You can still go to heaven. No. You will be in a very, 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 very big problem. But if your leader can happily go and stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ and say, you know, God, this man, this woman, this member that I had when I was on earth, you know, he called me to make sure that I was okay, to check up on me when I didn't have money and sometimes food was hard. They would send me money. They would help with food. If they had two and I had none, they would always give me one. Whatever they had, they would share with me. You know, they loved me. Like a father loves his son and a son loves his father, etc. They cared for me. Even when, even when people were speaking badly on my name outside, they would always defend me, etc. All these things. Do you not think that if you, if your leader goes to give you an account in joy, do you not think that that will also make God proud? Do you also not think that God will be happy for you as an individual? 
who your leader has given an account of or an account to. It would make God happy. Why? Because you have been a humble servant. You have been submissive to your leader. You did not take your leader for granted. You respected them. You loved them. You showed compassion for them. Even when they were crying, you would also cry with them. When they were joyful, you would be joyful with them. You were there for them through thick and through thin. You did not leave them. You helped them in the work of God. You did not speak badly on their names. Do you not think this would make God happy? My brethren, don't take your leaders for granted. God has placed them there for a reason. He has placed them there for a reason. So this is going to be the end of the message. Please share, like, comment. You know, and I hope and I pray that everything that was said today, that you will take something with you. This was TSM TV. Stay blessed.